Hi folks, something a little different this time. Uh, given my interest recently in making videos about books that I've read, I thought I would do a booktube tag. Now what's, a, what's booktube, you might wonder. Booktube is a community of people on YouTube who like to talk about books. And if you type in booktube as a search term, you'll find all the booktubers. So I'm kind of becoming a booktuber maybe a little bit myself. Uh, slowly, but my channel isn't going to be exclusively about books. Uh, philosophy was really the main theme of this channel, but I like to cover all kinds of things that I'm interested in, so um, I like books. And this is a tag by Michael K. Vaughan, who I'm subscribed to. Hi, Michael. Uh, and it's called the Astounding Science Fiction Tag. You'll find all kinds of tags in the booktube community. This is, this is a thing that this community does. So, my first tag, Michael K. Vaughan. And you should check out Michael's channel. Uh, he's a really good booktuber. Uh, he puts out videos uh, once every couple of days. And uh, they're really interesting. He has an interest in everything from DC comic book characters all the way to obscure texts that were published like in ancient Greece and <laughs> this kind of thing. So now everything in between. But he does like a good science fiction yarn. So he's made a tag about science fiction. So thank you Michael for making this tag. And I will attempt to answer your eight questions. Question one. What was the first science fiction book that you read and what did you think of it? Uh, I was a late reader, not until I was aged maybe 13, 14, so I suppose the first science fiction book that I read was one that I was forced to read because it was done in the school classroom. And it was a book called, you've probably never heard of it, it was called No Man's Land by Simon Watson. And I don't remember it being especially good when I was young and had to read it in English. But for some reason it always kind of stuck in my head, along with Zed for Zachariah, which was the other science fiction book that we were forced to read in junior high. And I've since, uh, I've since looked, for that, looked for these books again and, and read them again and enjoyed them much more in adulthood than I did in childhood, particularly Zed for Zachariah, which is about a, a girl surviving a nuclear war. Superb book, but it's not the first one. The first one is definitely No Man's Land. So I found a copy of it, it's out of print, and I, it even took me a while to find out who wrote it, because all I could remember was it was called No Man's Land. I couldn't remember the author, so I had to do Google searches for No Man's Land. You can imagine how many results that came up with, including multiple books called No Man's Land. But I finally found the cover that I remembered, which was different from this cover. And once I'd found the name Simon Watson, I knew, right, okay, now I can go onto eBay and find this. So I purchased a copy, it was pretty cheap, nobody's looking out for this particular book, and lo and behold, it ended up being a first edition hardback that came in the mail. Um, and even better than that, it was signed by the author, which I did not expect, and that was not given in the uh, description of the item for sale. Norman and something, I can't, remember, I can't read the second part, uh, with love and best wishes for a happy senior citizenship, Simon Watson. Right. So this is a novel. I like it a lot more now. It's about a, a young boy who lives in the countryside near a big old castle called The Keep, where uh, a, a character, an old man who goes by the name The General, he might have been a general before that, but he's just an old man. He lives there, and there's boys are playing everywhere, and they're sort of friendly with this general guy. And everybody starts to move. They're having such fun, but all the families start to move away to urban areas. And the same thing happens to Alan, that, that's the guy's name, his, him and his family. They have to move away, and they go from living in a cottage in the countryside to essentially what would be like living in a flat and even worse than the sort of flat that you'd have today. Not that there's anything wrong with living in a flat, but it's like, you know, neighbor noise and everything. And But it's a tiny little dwelling that he has to adjust to living to. And he misses his old life so much. When he's old enough to get a motorcycle, uh, he makes his way back to his old uh, playground. 
and he, it's everybody had to move away because the whole place is going to be developed. You know, and this is the theme of the book, and this was totally lost on me as a kid. You know, the the, the constant creeping urbanization of everything. He finds that the general is still there in in that castle, and he's basically trying to avoid being sent away to an old people's home. So Alan helps the general, and every weekend he goes back and forth. And it's just about, it's just a quiet sort of child-friendly adventure story. It's not one of those kid book, kiddie books where the characters are sort of harebrained and not very realistic. It does feel like more grown-up children's book, the sort of thing John Christopher tended to write. Um, the science fiction element, it sits, sets slightly in the future. And the science fiction element in the story really revolves around a gigantic robot that's going to be used for construction. And it's a new thing. And there is kind of a showdown of sorts towards the end. I suppose that's the only sort of harebrained part of it is the sort of intelligence of the robot. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not exactly what you call hard SF. But I just really enjoyed reading a chapter of this novel each night as I went to bed. It's one of those ones that's just it's just a delight to curl up to and read and just a really endearing story and I'm sure I'm going to read it again. In fact I'm in the middle of trying to scan this. Not that I'm trying to you know breach cop. it is a breach of copyright I know that but I'm not trying to, to do anything like piracy. This book is out of print. It will probably never be in print again you know so I want it to be preserved in some fashion digitally so that it doesn't get completely lost because it's one that's kind of close to my heart. I really like it. So that is the first science fiction book that I read. Question two. What was the last science fiction book you read and what did you think of it? The last one was Childhood's End. I won't say too much about it because I just did a review of it recently. Childhood's End by Arthur C. Clarke. A first contact story. Uh, is it an invasion story? Is it not? Well, I won't say. But suffice to say, when when the reason is revealed of the why the aliens are there in their gigantic ships, uh, it's one that you would never think of. It's a really good, really good piece of golden age science fiction. Uh, it stands the test of time. Solid eight out of ten, or four out of five. Uh, yeah. Fans of Arthur C. Clarke, some of them seem to say this is his best work. I've only read two Arthur C. Clarke books, but they say this is his best, and I can well believe it. Childhood's End. Question three. If you love science fiction, what made you love science fiction? In part, I suppose, growing up in the 70s, uh, there was a bit of an explosion of science fiction in film and television, with Star Wars especially, but also ones like Logan's Run. And there's a whole slew of science fiction movies that I would have seen that were 1970s ones, including Alien, even though it was like uh, Certificate 18. I still got to see it, because things weren't the same in the 70s <laughs> in terms of kids being able to watch 18 movies. Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, but I think a better answer, and an answer that's closer to the truth, is I think I was the type of kid really sort of that wanted life to be full, filled with more wonder than it actually was. You know, you want life to be more wondrous and science fiction is the perfect vehicle for that. Some people I guess prefer fantasy but I always preferred spaceships and lasers and stuff like that. Um, oh, let me grab something. I want, I want to show you this. One second. This is probably my, my one of my earliest possessions, just to show you, you know, it's, it's a little vinyl record. Journey into Space. I can remember seeing that in the shop and asking my mum to buy it for me when I was a little kid. And it's actually pretty cool. It's got some good tracks on it. It's got Space Oddity by David Bowie. And it's not a cover version, it really is David Bowie singing. Supersonic Rocket Ship. I don't know who sings that. It's got Starman, also by David Bowie, and Calling Occupants of Interplanetary Craft by the Carpenters. So I just loved this little record as a kid because it was space themed, you know? So, I mean, 
it also this is also I suppose my interest in in the paranormal as well. I loved the paranormal as a kid. Uh, there was a big collection of encyclopedias called The Unexplained that you could collect week by week, issue by issue. And I've, I had all of those collected over a period of years. But I don't have them anymore, I'm sorry to say, because uh, being a Christian at one point in my life, I tossed them all out, I think. Uh, I do have this, which is kind of similar. We're getting way off topic here, but you know, this is the sort of thing I'm talking about. This one is called Input. Uh, it's a computer programming manual of sorts, but you collect the magazines uh, issue by issue, one at a time. So there's basically about 12 issues of a magazine in here, and then you buy the binders. So I had 13 volumes like this of The Unexplained, because I love paranormal stuff, whether it was Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster or UFOs and all that stuff. So the interest in science fiction, I think, stems from that sense of wonderment. Something that I have recaptured without science fiction in adulthood uh, by stumbling essentially across a form of spirituality that I think is authentic, which goes by the name non-duality. But that's another subject for another day. Right. Uh, what is your favorite science fiction movie? Okay, there's a few contenders. They're all old. Um, I was thinking, is it Blade Runner? Is it Alien? Is it even Mad Max 2, The Road Warrior? They're all really good. The Thing by John Carpenter. But no, I think, and this is going to be a really boring answer. I think it's just got to be Star Wars, Episode 4, A New Hope, which was just called Star Wars when we were like young. Uh, nobody called it A New Hope. <laughs> that only happened when there were like six episodes available. But yeah, Star Wars, the original movie, uh, it, it, it always bears re-watching. It's never tiresome to re-watch it. If I were to pick a more recent sci-fi movie, contenders would be Blade Runner 2049, which I thought was excellent. Even Dread from the Judge Dread franchise, uh, I thought it was great. But I think that Star Wars, the original movie, still takes the crown. Yeah. It's just a perfect space opera. Okay, what is your favorite science fiction TV show? Uh, again, it's old. I own it on DVD. And it is The Tripods. You may have heard of this because it's based on a series of novels by John Christopher. The White Mountains, The City of Golden Lead, and The Pool of Fire. And now there's another fourth one called When the Tripods Came. They only ever made two series of this, uh, which was a shame because we've only really got the two books. And they sort of rigged the ending differently. When they knew they weren't going to get a season three, they rigged the ending differently so that there would be closure. Uh, so it is a complete story. It's just different than from the books. Um, this is essentially uh, a dystopian future that looks like 18th century rural England. But there's these gigantic machines called tripods that are about the size of two houses stomping about the countryside. And nobody's bothered by them because they've all got this gizmo attached to their forehead called a cap. It's kind of a metal triangular mesh called a cap. And it makes adults more compliant, takes away their curiosity and their aggression, stuff like that. So you are mind controlled. And all parents put their children through a rite of passage into adulthood, which involves a tripod coming to the village and a ceremony where the child is brought up in one of the tripod's tentacles up into itself. So this is not War of the Worlds tripods. Uh, and this implantation is done to the child and they're brought back. They're now an adult and they're essentially mind controlled. And what's interesting about it is I like, I like science fiction that is about alternate futures, dystopian societies where something really aberrant has become normalized. Logan's Run would be another example where you get a certain age and you're supposed to give up your life and die. 
and go through something called renewal, right? If you watch the movie, the carousel thing. So it's kind of like a system of life is in place that makes no sense, but everybody, because they're compliant, because they're good citizens, because they don't question the norms, they go along with it. Or you become a runner, hence the title Logan's Run. <laughs> uh, love that movie, love the book of that too. Love the tripods for the same reason. So it's all about a boy called Will who decides not having it, I'm not gonna be capped. And he, he, he runs away with his cousin Henry to a place called the White Mountains where there are supposed to be free people, right? It's really, really good TV show. I used to have dreams about this uh, after I watched it. For years, I had dreams about this. So even though it's a bit kind of hokey in places and silly, uh, it's still overall a really terrific TV show with a, a wonderful atmosphere largely due to Ken Freeman's brilliant music throughout it, which has like synthesizers juxtaposed with English countryside. So weird, but it works so well. So that's uh, question four. Question five, what is your favorite? No, that was question five, yeah. Question six, what science fiction book do you feel should be read more often? Okay, did we do question five? Yeah, we did. What science fiction book do you feel should be read more often? It's called Orbitsville by a writer called Bob Shaw. Now, I first discovered Bob Shaw in my teens by picking up a little short story collection called Dark Night in Toyland uh, in my local bookshop and I loved it. It was very much in the vein of those Twilight Zone-ish Richard Matheson type stories. Fabulous. Uh, I read another one of his novels at the time called Vertigo. I liked it. And uh, he's always been stuck in my head, but I never really read much of his stuff in, in the intervening period until like last year where I read Orbitsville, which is his most well-known novel. In my mind, Orbitsville, it's one of those ones like it's a big object in space. Uh, it's a space adventure where there's an object in space like 2001, like Rendezvous with Rama, all that sort of stuff. But as far as I'm concerned, Orbitsville is a 2001 beater, in my opinion. I know a lot of people will disagree with that, but I love this story. Uh, it has way better characterization than 2001 as well as the sort of grandeur of the, the space adventure. There's a domestic side to it involving um, crime and running away and a terrible accident that means someone has to go on the run. And I don't want to give it all away, but that side of it, along with the big grandeur of the, of the, the object in space, you know, it's uh, the mysterious object in space. It makes it just such a perfect space adventure story. And this is, this is close to home for me because Bob Shaw, I didn't know this until recent years, but Bob Shaw is a science fiction author who is from Belfast, 25 miles down the road from me, Belfast. Um, and he was a contemporary. He, was right, he wrote his first novel, let me see his Wikipedia page. His first novel was published in 1967 and he's written lots of books right through to 1995. And Orbitsville is part of a trilogy. Orbitsville, it was written in 1975, then Orbitsville Departure in 1983, Orbitsville Judgment in 1990. I've only re read Orbitsville, but I love it. So imagine discovering an object in space that is the size of, let's say, think of the orbit of the Earth around the Sun, right? Well, this object in space is the size of the circumference of that orbit and it's a solid object and it has a very specific function that's really interesting that's just all I'm going to give away read Orbitsville Bob Shaw is he never makes the top 100 sci-fi lists he should be in there uh, his books are still available cheaply on Kindle uh, I do recommend getting Orbitsville Okay, the next question, number seven. What is your favorite science fiction short story? 
Over the past year and a half, I've been trying to read every story by Richard Matheson and every story by John Wyndham, and I'm getting close. And I think the one story that sticks in my mind more than any other, and it's a Matheson one, and it's called The Last Day. It's essentially about the last day on earth, nobody's going to survive, everybody's getting drunk, partying, having sex, just trying to blot out what's going to happen. There's only one day left, how are you going to spend it? So after a night of debauchery, the protagonist wakes up and in his mind is the fact that he hasn't seen his mother. But his mother is one of these intensely religious people and he's not. <laughs> this is this hits close to home for me because of my background with Christianity. I didn't have religious parents especially, but my background with Christianity and how people feel about that. So he makes his way across town to his mother. And it's just this heartwarming story of what happens between them. And I just love it. I think it's a masterpiece. Uh, the Last Day by Richard Matheson. Yeah. You can find it in various collections of his, including the, uh, the Penguin Best Of collection. I think it's in that. It's not a hard story to find. Yeah. Last question. What is your favorite science fiction book? Uh, it's got to be The Chrysalids by John Wyndham. Uh, I think John Wyndham is the greatest science fiction author. Uh, Others may come close, but I think he's the best. I discovered him in high school. I've loved him ever since. I'm close to having everything read that he's ever written. <clears throat> and of all his novels, the best one, I think, is The Chrysalids. <clears throat> it's set in a post-apocalyptic world, probably hundreds of years after some kind of possibly nuclear uh, war, due to the fact that there are mutations everywhere. And it's all about a religious, vaguely agricultural, religious society that it looks kind of like Christianity, but it's not. The rules of this religion are all to do with genetic purity. Like if you're born with any kind of genetic abnorm abnormality about you, you, I can't remember if they kill you. I think they just shun you. You have to go. You're not allowed to be part of society. Uh, so it's told from the perspective of a, of a boy in his teens who has a girl that he loves, I think she's called Sophie and he's called David, and she has six toes. Uh, and it's found out, I think they were swimming one day and her footprint was left on the rock, and it comes out, David doesn't out her, but it comes out that she has six toes, and her and her family, they have to go on the run. And it's heartbreaking for David. But David and some of the other people some of the other young people, maybe it's just one, I can't remember, they have a genetic abnormality, but it's not as easy to see because theirs is psychic in nature, right? Uh, I won't tell you any more than that, but things don't go well for David when uh, it gets found out. The Chrysalids is a wonderful novel. It's, on one level, it's just an adventure novel that you can enjoy, on another level, it has something to say about the oppressive nature of religion and the authority it puts on your life. It also has something to say about um, the whole survival of the fittest thing in, in evolution, and, and especially as it pertains to human beings and what they are evolving into, hmm? and who's going to be left behind kind of thing. Uh, yeah, it is a very interesting novel. I've read it about three or four times. I will probably read it again. Uh, I don't think anything else comes close. This is definitely my favorite science fiction novel. Okay, that is the amazing, the astounding science fiction tag from Michael K. Vaughan. Don't forget to check Michael K. Vaughan's channel in the description below. See you later.